In this video, we present facts about the Incredible Hulk TV show with Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno from the 70s and early 80s. Stick around towards the end to learn about the very first cameo Stan Lee ever did. And can you guess which episode Jack Kirby did a cameo on the Incredible Hulk? Find out towards the end of the video. The show began as a two-hour TV movie featuring a television version of the Hulk's origin. It was then picked up as a regular series in 1978 for five seasons. It continued with three more TV movies that started in 1988. The TV series was developed and produced by Kenneth Johnson, who also worked on The Six Million Dollar Man and is credited with creating the Bionic Woman. The comic book banner became cursed with the Hulk due to saving Rick Jones from a gamma bomb blast while taking the hit from the blast himself. On the show, the gamma bomb was replaced with a gamma ray chair where he accidentally bombards himself with more radiation than he intended while trying to find the key to the strength that all humans have during times of life or death struggle. Bruce Banner's name from the comic books was changed to David Banner for the TV show. Marvel Comics labeled their Hulk books Marvel's TV sensation on the front cover during the time of the Hulk TV series. Likely just for fun, the comic book banner was once enraged to see himself portrayed on television and transformed into the Hulk to go off to smash Hollywood for turning his life into a soap opera in Marvel 2 and 1 number 46. While Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno didn't really make an appearance in that issue, there were a lot of Hollywood cameos from back in the day that were in the book. Check it out. We ha I have a video on it you might be interested in seeing. Let's take a real quick break to ask you to please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And let me know in the comments what classic pop culture comic book heroes or TV shows you'd like me to do a video on next. Now if you like comic book heroes like I do, be on the lookout in the next few months or so for my character Liberty Ace. That's Liberty Ace. My name's Tim Frady. It'll be published on Amazon. It's all about fun, adventure, and escapism. So on with the video. Now, according to a Wikipedia entry I read, the Hulk is about 7 feet tall and 300 pounds on the show. Now, in the comics, it clearly says that the Hulk is 7 feet tall and weighs 1,000 pounds. This was usually mentioned in the top of the first page of the Incredible Hulk comic books back in the 70s and 80s, where it gives the Hulk's origin introduction at the beginning of the book. David Banner can never remember what he did as the Hulk, which has been the case in most of the comic books throughout the years. The character Jack McGee was played by Jack Colvin, and he was added to hunt the Hulk, much like was done in the classic television series The Fugitive, where Dr. Kimball is chased by a police detective named Philip Gerard. Mr. McGee, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. In the Hulk series, McGee is a newspaper reporter. In the comics, the Hulk was hounded mostly by the military, led by General Ross and sometimes by superheroes. The Hulk considered almost all humans to be his oppressor in the comics, as he often raged, Why don't the puny humans just leave Hulk alone? The open narration of the show was provided by Ted Cassidy, who's famous for playing the Addams Family Butler, and also for being the second actor to play the Bionic Bigfoot on the Six Million Dollar Man. Cassidy also did the Hulk's growls in the first uh, two seasons. Unfortunately, he died during the production of season two in 1979. Kenneth Johnson originally tried to get his version of the Hulk to be red for the color rage, but according to his own words, he couldn't convince Stan Lee it was a good idea. Now, years later, there would be a red Hulk in the comics, but it wouldn't be the Banner Hulk. On the TV show, the Hulk never spoke. He only growled, whereas in the comics, he actually did speak. The TV Hulk was limited in strength as compared to the comic book series. He was able to be wounded by bullets, and while he did heal quickly, it was usually from one transformation to the next. The comic book Hulk, though, was invulnerable to bullets and bombs. One of the few things that could hurt the Hulk was Wolverine's claws, which could actually cut him, but he would heal almost instantaneously. Stan Lee once said about the TV show, he said, The Hulk was done intelligently. It was done by Ken Johnson, who's a brilliant writer, producer, director, and he made it an intelligent adult show that kids could enjoy. He took a comic book character and made him somewhat plausible. Women liked it and men liked it and teenagers liked it. It was beautifully done. He changed it quite a bit from the comic book, but every change he made made sense. Actor Richard Kill was hired for the role of the Incredible Hulk originally, but during filming, 
Kenneth Johnson's own son pointed out that Kiel's tall but underdeveloped physique just didn't match up to the Incredible Hulk. Soon Kiel was replaced with Blue Ferrigno. There still is or still was a shot of Kiel as the Hulk in the pilot. Now he was famous for playing ba the bad guy Jaws in The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker, both James Bond movies starring Roger Moore. Bill Bixby was a very popular actor before starring on the Incredible Hulk show, having been widely known for his role in My Favorite Martian and other TV series. Lou Ferrigno was a champion bodybuilder before he ever put on the green makeup. The makeup process took three hours. He had to remove his green eye contacts every 15 minutes because he found them to be painful. Joe Hartnell composed the music for the Incredible Hulk. He was brought on because of his work on the Bionic Woman. He created the extremely sad music heard at the very end of every episode as we see Banner walking off or hitchhiking. Writer Stan Lee and artist Jack Kirby are credited with creating the Hulk in the comic books. Jack Kirby made an uncredited cameo appearance in the 1979 episode No Escape. He can be spotted in a hospital scene as a police sketch artist. Big bone man uh, with thick eyebrows, real thick. No, nah, that's wrong. It's all wrong. Now, Stan Lee's cameo on the Hulk didn't happen until the show originally had been canceled. It occurred in the 1989 TV reunion movie, The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, where Stan is a jury foreman in a dream sequence, which is the very first Stan Lee cameo before any of the movies. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Please subscribe. Hit that like uh, button and the uh, bell for future notifications so you know when we make another video. Thank you very much. Have a great day.